there, I'm Carolyn Yovan, the artist that designed and hand-painted your transfer designs. Now that you have them in front of you, remember take your time and follow any and all of the tips that I have for you today. It really is as easy as I've said, regardless of the design, whether you've chosen fish or fruit, flowers or butterflies, or the all-encompassing vines, the application is always the same. And remember, if you follow my directions, you'll have amazing results that you could be proud of. First thing I want to do is show you an actual transfer up close. I know you do have them in front of you, but if you take a look on the back, you're going to have a protective sheet. And the reason we have that is because if you put your fingers right here, it is very sticky. Now this is what's going to adhere to the surface. So you want to make sure that you keep that protective sheet on the back of it until you know exactly where you want to place it. We have two things that do not come in the kit, and that's tape and scissors, but I'm sure you have those in your house. So all you need to do is take a piece of tape, put, put one piece on the top to secure that down, and then if you go to the bottom of the design, again, it's going to separate and it'll be sticky, so you want to tape that down securely as well. And then once you have those in place, you know you're safe, you can start designing where you want to put your vines. Now if you take a look at the sheets of vines, you can tell that they're absolutely identical. And the way I've designed them is to literally create a border with each vine by lining them up end to end. So all you do is lay it out so that it, it's even. This vine starts where this one ends and you can just keep going all the way down the wall to create a beautiful border. Now if you want to get a little more creative with it, what I've done is I've indicated on each sheet where you can cut. When Sully gets here, we're going to show you an actual mural that we're going to build, but for now I just want you to take a look at your sheets and you can see where you can cut them on the bias, as you would an actual plant. And then we'll show you how to actually do that on the wall. Okay, now before I create the mural, what I do is I cut out the vines so I can lay them out in front of me. And what you want to do is just cut down, make sure you keep the protecting sheet behind it. And now when I get to this area where it can be cut, I'm going to cut it along the bias of the vine, just like that. And then what you want to do is cut this end out. And there you go, you've got one piece done. The next piece is right here, can be cut here. So what you want to do here is bring it up and again, cutting along. You don't want to cut right across it. You want to cut as if you would cut a natural plant. And then just bring it around and find your way out. Okay, so now that we have two cut out, let's go to the third. This one's a little trickier because we have all these little tendrils. So just be careful where you cut. Go around each area of the design and then just work your way down again and cut across that area and out. And then what I do when I have each one cut is I take a piece of tape and I tape them all to their backing just to make sure that when I place them on the wall the backing doesn't fall off. And that way you can tape them to the area and when you're ready, you're happy with the positioning, you can take that protective sheet out. Okay, now that we've cut them out, you may be wondering why I asked you to do that. But if you take a look at the actual vine, it's 24 inches long. What we can do with the cut vines is make them longer and let them meander where you want them. What I've done is I've just taken them out, I've laid them down, and I'm going to place them where a vine would naturally grow. And that looks natural just like that. And then what we can do here is, is play around with it positioning wise. Okay, that looks good like that. Now with this one, we can either go around a corner and let it go say that way so you can circle it around or you can keep it going straight ahead like this. So you can keep it going any way you want it. Now another thing to keep in mind is positioning. Obviously, now that looks good like that, 
What you wouldn't want to do is place the vines so that they don't make sense. I mean, clearly, if you line it up like that, that doesn't look like a natural vine. So those are the only things you need to keep in mind when you're laying these out. What I do is I tape these individually, and that way when I'm ready to put them down, I can lay them wherever I want and reposition them till I'm happy with where I want them. See how great that looks there? Now I want to show you how the flowers work. All you have to do again is cut around the design, make sure you keep that protective sheet on. I can't tell you that enough because it's very important that you keep that on till you're ready to position it. I think that looks great right there. Again, you want the vine to go right up into where the blossom starts. And I love keeping the flowers on top of the actual leaves because that's what nature would do. I'm gonna tape that, I'm gonna hold that into place, and then I'm just gonna position everything out before I'm ready to go. For those of you that have ordered a pack that includes the wrought iron, I have a couple quick suggestions for you on the layout. If you pull the two sheets out, you'll notice that we've got a superimposed design, we have a left and a right, and that's so that when you put it over a doorway or a window, it's centered and it's symmetrical. What I've done here is I've indicated each separate design with an A, B, C, D, or E. And when you cut them out, this is to aid you in your layout. And what I've done is I've gone and I've cut out a couple ahead of time so that I can show you how you can customize your space without having to follow my lead. What you're going to do is you're going to measure the area that you want to cover and you're going to get that measurement done. You're going to lay out your design according to those measurements. Now what I do is I start with the A because this is the largest of the designs and I like to center it with that. These E's are fun little fleur de lis that you can use to attach those together. And the idea here is to attach the designs so that they look like they're a real piece of wrought iron. And I'm going to put the B, this is the B, and now the B and the D are the actual same design. And I've done that so that you can add to it or you can, you don't have to use them all together. You can put them in different areas of your house. What I like to do is lay this out just like this, add the C down here, there's the B. And now what I can do is if my area is this big, I'm all set. If my area is larger, I simply move it out. So you can manipulate these designs any way you want to so that you can customize your space. It'll fit any area of your house. Once you have them centered and laid out, you put them up on your wall, tape them down, remove the backing, and start rubbing. Now what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've added the wrought iron to a window so you can see how beautiful it really is. I've also added vines and flowers to complete the design but if you want to take it a step further, you can accent it with birds and or butterflies. Okay, here we are. We're ready to set up our own mural. I've got Sully here to help me out. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and, and what we want to do is we're going to use the four pack of the extra four pack of vines. We're going to use the actual pack that we got, right? because this is a big doorway, so we're going to need those extra four vines. I'm going to start off on the bottom, and I'm going to put a full one up, and I'm going to ask Sully to do the same thing over there. This way, once you get comfortable with it on the bottom, you can start getting creative on the top, and you already know what you're doing. This is like the foundation, right? Yeah, this is this is the base. Now, like one. One thing we're working on here, Carolyn, and maybe you could explain, is we got a real hard texture on this surface. <laughs> yes, we do. So tell us a little bit about the difference between the textures. Okay. Well, this is a perfect example to show you of a textured wall. Uh, most of you will probably have a flat, smooth wall, which is ideal. But this is great to show you that it works just as well. All you have to do is make sure you get in all the little nooks and crannies and just take your time with it. Get all those little tendrils and you're going to go over the entire surface. And then when you're ready, you slowly peel it back. And make sure you've got everything down. But what's nice about this is when it's on, it actually looks like it's hand painted. This is the best way to hold this stick flat like this. It gives you more surface area. And you can even look around your house if you have uh, palette knives or um, putty knives. Those will work as well. 
Now you could, you wouldn't have to cut these if you didn't want to, right? A, a, you no. wouldn't have to use a full one. You could cut this if you wanted to to make it last a little longer. The only reason we like to cut them is because you can extend them longer. You get more, you get more out of it, or you just might want it to look thinner in some areas, or you may want them to meander around the doorway or up the wall or around a window. I mean, you get more flexibility when you cut them. And with these textured walls, when I peel the backing away, what I do is with my hands, I go into all the little nooks and crannies just to make sure it's completely adhered. Because there might be some areas that you missed. You can touch it immediately and just rub into all the little nooks and crannies so that this doesn't come off in any area. It's completely secure. Get all the little tips. You don't have to do this when it's on a flat surface, but I definitely recommend it on these textured walls. Well, I've got this one off as well. Like you say, uh, this is probably the roughest surface that I've put it on, and Karen's right, but it doesn't take long to go on, and like Karen says, it's instant gratification. <laughs> and uh, I think we're ready to go now. I'm not gonna use a full one coming off the top here. I think what I'm gonna do, actually, Karen, if that's okay with you, is, is train into the door and then maybe bring it out a little bit here? Sure. Is that okay? Yeah, have fun with it. I'm gonna do something a little tricky, all right? And this is a little trick that uh, Karen has told me. So I'm just gonna rub over it gently and then just press it into the corner like this, okay? And then I'm gonna press it down here and fold it there. And this is what I really like. You can see this is already stuck down on the corner right here. So uh, we've done that and I'll carry on. How are you doing over there, Karen? Great. I just put this little piece on here and now I'm just gonna go through my little pile of cutout transfers and see what fits next. I kinda like that one. Okay, I've already done the bottom two down here and I took this one into the wall and I didn't peel it off yet because I wanted to show you how all I did was rub it in. And what I've done here is used like one full vine and then just a little cutaway and that's gone in. But almost as if the vine's grown in behind, I've decided to come up here with another cutaway. I'm using a full sheet, but we're making our way to the corner. What I've done over here is I've kept mine growing up and I've been using cutaways. And now obviously this is very different from Sully's side, but you know what, vines in nature don't grow uniformly. They grow however they want to. So there's no reason that each side has to be exactly the same. Now, I want to address something that everyone's going to ask. What if you make a mistake and you really don't like what you've done with the, you just say you've gone the wrong way? Yep, or, or if you've changed your decor, anything right, like right. that. Well, you know what I recommend is that you treat this as if it had been hand painted because that's basically what it is. Um, if, if you change your decor, you want to change your wall colors, if you've made a, a mistake beyond repair, just simply paint over it as if you would over a painted surface and then start over. And this is a good chance, I don't know if we can get really close, you can actually see it changing color. This is what Carol and I talk about. You just kind of wait till the whole transfer changes color and I know that's on. You know what I did is I changed direction here. Now I've got this one going up like this. I've got this one coming out. And what I'm going to do with this one is maybe have him falling downward. And you can even, little things, if you need just one little piece, you can even cut like Carolyn says, she hasn't even marked. Once you get good at this, you can, even if you just need one little leaf, just snip the leaf off and you can have just one little leaf coming out here. We might do that a little bit later on. This is really only one full vine, this right here. But, but the way I cut it out and laid it, it, it looks like it's more. So you've got one full one on the bottom and then this is a full one right here. So I know a lot of you got the extra vines and that's great because I guarantee you're gonna use them, you're gonna want them. But there are ways that you can extend them even farther than you think. I found a perfect spot for this caterpillar. I like these open areas right here where they'd be crawling. So let's put him right here. Okay, and that one big open spot. And that's what's amazing about these. That took me a couple seconds. Now I cut out the blossoms and the ones with the little green bottoms, the bases, you're just gonna line up with the green on the vine. 
So I've got him coming like that so it looks natural. And you're not going to believe how much these are going to